There isn't just one party that runs everything around here. There are hundreds and thousands and millions of great Democrats everywhere across the country, from California to the New York Island, and in Comer, Georgia, and in all of the places where y'all have come from. I'm a resident of Walton County. I, wow. I'm a resident of Walton County, Georgia. I live between the little towns of Monroe and Good Hope. Yes, it did hit me on the head, but I'm okay. My backyard fronts on a cow pasture, and my father rest his soul he passed away a few years back but before he died he said to me he'd like to put up a sign for reverend warnock and he said he said gareth i know you're into politics i bet you can get me one of those signs i said sure and for him it was an act of courage it was a bold thing to put up a Reverend Warnock sign in Monroe, Georgia. Oh. Look what happened. <laughs> we here in Georgia elected not only Reverend Warnock, but also John Ossoff. would not have been possible without voters like my dad and me and us. So even though I've got a red shirt on today, I'm not sure why I picked red, but I am boldly blue, and I encourage everyone to be boldly blue and vibrant wherever you may live. My platform is for choice, for democracy, for tomorrow. We're not going back. So remember my name, Gareth Fenley, first time candidate. We'll see how it goes no matter what the election brings us. It is my sincere wish that whoever gets the most votes is the winner and I predict that will be the Democratic ticket. Thank you to our incredible Madison County Democrats for putting this on. I am just frankly thrilled to be here. And um, the only thing that makes me sad right now is that Jackson County got redistricted out of the 10th Congressional District. So, boo to our legislatures, because I love y'all. I see winter over there. <laughs> so, when I was younger, I was not super involved in politics. I, um, though I really cared about what was going on, I, I didn't really see myself in politics. I didn't really feel that I had a voice or that I as an individual could make a difference. I really felt like elections were kind of just something that happened to us, that they were driven by these rich old men, you know, just in it for themselves, trying to make themselves more rich and more successful, and that I was kind of just on the sidelines watching what was happening to us. And then something changed for me. In 2020, I heard that uh, uh, yeah. there was a lack of poll workers because a lot of older poll workers were planning to stay home because they didn't want to get sick. And I realized I'm young and pretty healthy and uh, an easy thing for me to do to serve my community is to show up and make sure that our polls could stay open. <laughs> Thank you. And through that experience, though we really didn't talk politics much, because it's supposed to be nonpartisan, 
uh, I found that I wasn't an individual anymore, that I was working with a group of people and we were making a difference together in our community. And that is one of the big things that led me to this moment, uh, which was deciding to run for Congress at 31 years old. <laughs> yeah, it feels crazy. <laughs> and just like I had a realization that I could make a difference in elections, I've, I've talked to some people since I've been running and I've watched them also realize that they made a difference in politics. Um, I had a, a young woman, just 18 years old, that got drugged by her grandfather to one of my uh, campaign events, and we connected just super easily. She was a horse girl, I'm a horse girl, I worked on farms my whole life, and we just saw each other. And her grandfather saw me um, a week or two later, and he told me, hey, I just want you to know, she wasn't registered to vote, she wasn't planning to vote, um, but you meeting my granddaughter, talking with her, seeing her as she was, she's registered now, and she's planning to vote this November. And that is the power that we all have, that power to connect with people and show them, tell them that they are not islands, but a member of a big community who is coming together to make this a community that works for all of us, because that is our power. So that is my challenge to you. So my challenge to you is to carry that torch as well, to talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, show them that they too can be a part of this, that they are not just by themselves, that they can make a difference and you can make a difference. By the, the top way, there's, there's a couple things you can do. So you can write postcards, right? You can share your words. You can make phone calls. You can meet with someone voice to voice, right? But the most powerful thing you can do is talk to people in your community face to face. Show them, just like you are a part of this, they too can be a part of this. Because elections aren't just something to, that happened to all of us. This is something that we are doing together. That is the point of this event. Yeah. So I know that I am incredibly excited to be a part of this with you all. I'm so excited to go vote in November. Well, actually, I'm gonna vote early because uh, it's easier. So you should all do that too. Um, so I'm so excited to go vote for Kamala Harris and I'm so excited to go vote for these other wonderful Democrats. And I'm so excited that all of you are gonna vote with me and you are gonna bring your friends and your neighbors and you are gonna bring strangers that you find on the street and you're gonna make sure they're registered and that they're gonna vote and we are going to elect Kamala Harris as the next president of the United States. <laughs> so I, I worked that 2020 election where Georgia made history and we sent John Ossoff who is gonna come talk to us later, which I'm super excited about. We sent two Democratic senators, we elected Joe Biden, sent him to the White House, and we're gonna do it again. So again, thank you all so much for being here. I can't wait to stick around and chat with you all. Um, and I am, as soon as I can, gonna go eat some barbecue. <laughs> Thanks y'all, have a great day. Okay guys, a little history. How many of you were rallying in 2008? Do you remember who was running in 2008? Obama, Obama right? And we had energy then. Well, I'm going to tell you that we got double that energy now because we are rallying for Harris. And in 2008, the rallying cry was, rise up. Ready to go. You don't remember? I'm not talking about the weather. I'm talking about the devil.
God and it's not the weather, it's the Democrats. <laughs> Woo! Listen guys, I am your elected district attorney, so I'm a little bit different than the other candidates who are here because I'm actually running for re-election. I am asking you, you joined the journey four years ago when I came in and promised that we were gonna do things differently. Now I know that most people don't think about the judicial races. You don't think about district attorneys or solicitor generals or even judges because in Georgia, even though those are elected officials, very rarely do they ever get to the ballot because we have a system here where they can just retire and what does the governor do? Appoint, right? Appoint. So when we have these races, we have to pay attention. Why? Because after Harris gets the vote and wins, guess what has to happen? Certification. Yep. Certification has to happen, and guess where certification happens? In the courts. Guess where illegal, fraudulent voting cases go to? The district attorney's office. Yay. Don't you want somebody in that position who shares your values? Yeah. Don't you want somebody who's going to look at these cases that they're trying to shove down our throats and view them fairly and justly and do the right thing by our values? Yeah. That's how important the DA's office is in this race this year. You you want a district attorney who's going to be there and make sure that those shenanigans stop at the district attorney's office. So folks, we need to take this energy, we need to educate people because Harris has the numbers, we're going to win this, and then we've got our second fight in the courts to serve this so don't think your job is over on election day and if you're interested in these things please look up democracy docket democracy docket mark elias is the lawyer in charge of these election um, challenges that are happening in our court system watch and support democracy docket because after we win we have to make sure it gets certified for all of us. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. So bring your good times and your laughter too. We gonna celebrate and party with you. Come on now. Let's all celebrate and have a good time. This fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Little old Coma, Georgia. Wow. We're not in Atlanta, folks. We're in Coma, Georgia. And we are so appreciative to have these people here today that took time out of their schedule to come and to be with the Democrats in Northeast Georgia. I don't know how I got this job, but I got the most important job. Tell you just a little bit about one of our guests. And he will introduce the other two. Our Senator John Alsop. Yeah. One of us. Yeah. He was born and raised in Georgia. Since this election, Senator Ossoff has built 
bipartisan yes. leadership in the state, in the Senate, to achieve many meaningful legislation results for us in the state of Georgia. Even in a divided Congress in his first two years in office, Senator Ossoff passed into law more standalone bills than any other freshman senator. Legislative achievements include laws to strengthen mental health, public safety, tackle the op op opioid crisis, investigate unsolved lynchings, and civil rights murders. Senator Ossoff has led bipartisan investigations that exposed the mistreatment of the military families living in privatized housing, corruption in federal prisons, the sexual assault of female inmates, and the medical mistreatment of women in federal detentions. I have much, much more that I can tell you about Senator Arsenal, but I know that you want to hear from him, not me. So please help me welcome our Senator. Wonderful. You look ready to work. It is such a pleasure and an honor to be here. Can you hear me all the way in the back? Can you hear me all the way out here? I'm so grateful to the Madison County Democrats for hosting us today. Give it up for the Madison County Dems. I'm so grateful and honored by the privilege of representing this community in the United States Senate. Thank you for that honor. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you who did so much and worked so hard when all the national pundits and all the pollsters and all the political experts said we had no hope and in January of 2021, we sent a message heard around the world when you elected me and Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock to the United States Senate. And I want you to remember what they said and how that felt during those crucial months when the whole nation Look to us in Georgia. They said there was no way. They said there was no way that a black pastor who holds Dr. King's pulpit at Ebenezer Baptist Church and the young Jewish son of an immigrant could win in the state of Georgia. They didn't know Georgia. Because out of no way, we made a way. And the work that you've empowered us to do to lift up every community in our state, to fight for rural Georgia, to fight for Georgia farmers and growers, to fight for civil rights and human rights across the state, to fight for veterans, has made a profound difference across our state and across the nation. 
I'd like at this time to ask every veteran, every military service member, every military spouse to stand, please, or raise your hand if you're standing, and to be thanked by all of us for your service to the nation. Thank you. And I would like also everybody to join me in expressing our gratitude and appreciation for the law enforcement personnel keeping us safe today and every day in this community. Now listen, Madison County. We have a lot of work to do over the next few weeks. The stakes could not be higher. And this isn't about Democrats versus Republicans. This is about right versus wrong. I don't need to say much about the man. Former President Trump has demonstrated his unfitness for the highest office in the land. Former President Trump has demonstrated that he lacks the moral fiber and the moral compass to do what's right in the Oval Office. And we are going to have to get out the vote like we have never done it before. We can't leave it close. Do you all remember the phone call? Yeah. You remember the phone call? Yeah. That the former president made to Georgia's Secretary of State. Yeah. In which he pressured and threatened our state's top election official to quote, find, to find exactly the number of votes that he needed to win the election in a state that he had lost. Do you remember that phone call, yeah. Madison County? Yes. We can't leave it close. There is too much at stake. We have in Vice President Kamala Harris a qualified, determined, capable, prepared woman ready to assume the office of the presidency and to fight for Georgia and every state in the nation. And I think if you took a few moments to watch the recent debate, <laughs> once the former president finally summoned a little bit of courage to debate, the contrast was on full display for everybody in the nation. Now I'm hearing that the vice president just accepted another debate right here in the state of Georgia. But I have a feeling that Donald may be too scared to show up. I know something about facing an opponent who is too scared to debate. Y'all remember that empty podium? I tell you this, Madison County, the candidate who is dodging debates is the candidate who is losing. That's right. There is so much more we have to do for the state of Georgia and for the nation. And since we're here in a rural community, I want to talk about what we've achieved through the bipartisan infrastructure law to get lead pipes out of drinking water systems, to expand broadband internet access in an effort unlike anything since rural electrification in the 1930s, to upgrade surface transportation, to strengthen our energy grid, to make this country stronger and more prosperous and more secure. I want to talk about what we've done for our veterans, passing the PACT Act, the most significant strengthening of veterans' health care in decades. 
to ensure that those who served in Iraq or Afghanistan or anywhere where they were exposed to toxic fumes can get the health care they need without having to fight the VA's bureaucracy for years and years and years. I want to talk about the manufacturing incentives that we've passed to drive capital and investment and job creation in advanced industries to the state of Georgia and to every corner of the state of Georgia. We have accomplished so much, Madison County, but we have so much more to do. So Madison County, are you ready to work? Yeah. Madison County, are you ready to vote? Yeah. Madison County, are you ready to win? Yeah. I know you are. Just as the eyes of the nation turned to Georgia in January of 2021, so too are the eyes of the nation turning to Georgia now. The whole country is watching us to see what we're made of and what we believe in. And we have heroes from across the country who are coming to our state to stand with us as Georgians in this fight. And I have the honor today, I have the honor today of welcoming two of those heroes, two heroes who need no introduction. Two heroes who through their service and their sacrifice, each in their own way and together, have given so much and more for our great republic. Now, sometimes when I'm standing with Senator Kelly on the floor of the Senate, I try to encourage him to have a little more ambition about what he can achieve, <laughs> since he's just a decorated, combat veteran, naval aviator, space shuttle commander, international space, space station crew member, United States Senator. Come on, Mark. Good looking man, too. And he's a good looking man. <laughs> and a well-dressed man. <laughs> Someone with Mark Kelly's accomplishments and qualifications is completely outmatched by his significant other. America's Congresswoman, Gabby Giffords. Give it up for Gabby Giffords. This family has given so much for our great country. So let's stay on your feet <laughs> and give my colleague, my friend, an American hero who from catapulting off aircraft carriers in an A6 intruder to gliding the space shuttle to landing at Cape Canaveral to serving with distinction in the United States Senate fights for ordinary people across our country every single day. Senator Mark Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, John. I gotta say, you guys really hit the jackpot when they were picking senators for Georgia. John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock are two of the best. I love working with them. And you guys delivered the Democratic majority to the United States Senate in 2020. Now, I like to think we helped in Arizona a little bit. Because uh, I did, I was up against a Republican and won. But Chuck Schumer gives you guys all the credit. And as he should, because uh, it was a tough, tough election here in the state of Georgia. Uh, but it's great to be here in, in Madison County, in Comer, by a barn. And it's not too hot. 
In Arizona, it is still hot. It is, uh, it's cooling down now. And uh, it'll be cool on November 4th. Yep. In time for all of us, all the Democrats and the Independents and the Republicans yes. who are with us to get out and vote. A little, a little bit more about me. So I grew up um, originally from New Jersey. And I am the son of two police officers. So I want to double down on what John said. Thank you for law enforcement for being here. Thank you for the support. My mom was one of the first female police officers in northern New Jersey. And it's from my mom that I learned so much about just like getting stuff done. You know, Gabby used to say this all the time when she was in Congress. She used to say, strong women get things done. That was my mom and that was Gabby Giffords. You know, I met Gabby between my first and second space flight. And she was a member of the state legislature, and then she ran for Congress. She won in 2007. Woo! Woo! Sworn in in 2007. And then, you guys know the story, I mean, after Gabby was sworn in for her second re-election, so her third, third time in office, she was meeting with her constituents at a grocery store, and Gabby was shot, and 12 other people injured, six killed, happened in about 15 seconds, and changed our lives, changed our lives forever. It's, thank you. Changed our lives in a lot of different ways. And Gabby resigned from Congress. I left my, my job flying the space shuttle, a job that I worked really hard to get over a long period of time. And, um, but, you know, at the time, you know, Gabby was the member of Congress in our family. And I never thought about running for office. She was the member of Congress. And sometimes I think to myself, if I was the person who would have been injured, would Gabby have become an astronaut? <laughs> now Gabby says yes. You know, but I'm here because I'm a lifelong public servant. And when I saw what this guy, Donald Trump, did to our country between 2016 or 2017 and 2021, uh, I just couldn't no longer, you know, sit on the sidelines and felt that if he happens to win re-election, I got to do something. So I decided to run for this Senate seat. I won in 20 and I won again in 2022. And I thought that was it. I didn't think we'd see the guy again. But boy, did he have us fooled. He decided to pop his head up again. He popped his orange head back up. And when, I mean, there were a lot of veterans here, right? John asked veterans to raise their hand. I'm a veteran. My dad served at the, uh, he was in the 82nd Airborne. My grandfather served in World War II. And when you consider the complete lack of regard and respect that Donald Trump has for veterans and service members, I cannot believe we're back here again where this guy is just, you know, one election, 45 days away from occupying the Oval Office. So let me, let me, go, let me go through a couple things about what he has said about veterans. So in 2018, so get this, 2018, this guy's in Europe, and he's uh, asked to go to a World War I veteran's cemetery, but it's raining out. And he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go because he was afraid his hair was going to get messed up. And he said that the helicopter couldn't fly in the rain. We got any helicopter pilots here? Do you guys fly in the rain? I've flown in the rain in a helicopter. Helicopters fly in the rain. And they said the Secret Service wouldn't drive them there. He's, he's the President of the United States. He didn't want to go and mess up his hair. You know, he, he just needs to get my hair cut. <laughs> then it ain't a problem. But then what he said later to his Chief of Staff General, Marine Corps General John Kelly, 
He said he didn't want to go there because those service members who paid the ultimate price, to him, they're a bunch of losers. That's what he said. They're a bunch of losers. And then later on the same trip, when they were talking about the Battle of Bella Wood. Any Marines here? Hoorah. Battle of Bella Wood, 1,800 Marines lost their lives. And Donald Trump's response to that was that they're a bunch of suckers. I'm in the Senate seat of uh, Senator John McCain. From my first days in the United States Navy, I first learned about John McCain and his service to this country. And he served in a way, and he was in an impossible situation uh, as a POW. He was also a, a Navy pilot flying off an aircraft carrier and gave his all for this country. And Donald Trump said he's not a hero because he was captured. But let me tell you the rest of it. After he died, and his family is trying to put together his funeral service, Donald Trump didn't want the U.S. government to help because he said John McCain was a loser. Now, think about this again. We are 45 days from an election that could put that guy back in the Oval Office. I don't want him, I do not want him a mile away from the Oval Office. Actually, maybe that's not fair. Maybe that's not fair. I'll be okay if he just stays outside the fence. He can look through, you know, through the bars or the fence around the White House, but no closer than that. So let me, so that's, that's, what I, that's what's at stake here. You know, we, we've got the possibility of somebody who could be commander in chief again, who has no business being anywhere near the building. And what stands between that, is us. Yes. Yeah. And Woo! let me tell you a little bit about winning elections. I've won a couple really close ones. John here as well. Really hard elections. Now folks, this winning elections thing, this is, this is not rocket science. <laughs> now if it was, I could help. <laughs> but it is not rocket science. This is just about which side works harder. Yeah. Yeah. Who knocks on more doors? Yeah. Who makes more phone calls? Who has the better message? And let me tell you, there is no competition there between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Who has the message? Who has what is good and right and fair for the American people and who will move this country forward? And it's obvious who wants to drag us back into the past. And that's Donald Trump. Think about what this guy did when he was president for four years. He gave a big tax cut to billionaires, which includes himself and his billionaire friends. He took away women's reproductive rights and he shredded, shredded our alliances, especially in Europe, where there's a war going on right now, where if we do not get this thing right, our safety is at risk. And what do we expect him to do if he's in the White House again? More tax cuts for billionaires, taking away more rights from women, especially, and destroying our alliances. We can't have that. And on the other side, we have an experienced prosecutor who's been fighting for veterans, by the way, from her days as Attorney General, who cares about you and is who gonna, gonna fight for you and your family every single day, bringing down the cost of prescription drugs, bringing down the cost of housing, bringing down child care and health care costs. So, again, what do we got to do? We just got to work hard. That's it. We got to work harder than the other side. And if we do that, and if we win on Election Day, we can continue to work on all these problems and also solve the problem that has affected me and Gabby and our family very personally. And that's the issue of gun violence. This issue of gun violence makes our country stand out in the worst of ways. If you're a kid growing up in the United States of America today, the most likely reason you are to die is from a gunshot wound. It is shameful that we are like this. We got to fix this. And I'll tell you what, you know, before Gabby was injured, I knew she was a fighter. 
You know, she worked harder than anybody I knew. And after she was injured and what she went through, I could not believe the fight that she had in her. Fighting to survive and then six months in the hospital. Fighting to come back. Gabby Giffords reminds me every single day to deny the acceptance of failure. To not give up, to keep fighting, fighting for what's right, and fighting for this country, and fighting for all of you. So with that, let me introduce my wonderful wife and my partner, Gabby Giffords. darkest of days, days of pain and uncertain recovery, but confronted by despair I've summoned hope, confronted by paralysis and aphasia, I responded with grit and determination, I put one foot in front of the other, I found one word and then I found another. My recovery is a daily fight, but if I can make me stronger. We are at a crossroads. We let the shooting continue or we can act. We can protect our families, our future. We can vote. We can be on the right side of the history. Please join us in this fight. Thank you, thank you very much. just leave you with this to the leadership of the Madison County Democrats this is a great party this is a great picnic but great picnics do not win elections so I want to ask the powers that be here how do folks sign up to knock on doors and make phone calls. Where do they go to do that? There is a welcome desk right here. And by the way, thank you for putting on a great picnic. We love a great picnic. I'm just saying there's a lot more work to do. So you guys see this desk over here. How many of you have signed up to make a phone call or to knock on a door? I see a lot of opportunity for growth. Okay? Please. Not for me, not for Mark, not for Gabby, not for the Vice President herself, but for the nation. With so much at stake. Don't leave this event without signing up to take action. Do not wake up the day after the election and say, what have we done? How did we let this happen? What more could I have done? So one more time, Madison County. Are you ready to vote? Yeah. Are you ready to work? Yeah. Are you ready to win? Yeah. Let's do it, thank you so much. <laughs>